welcome, welcome to this exciting evening. My name is Alison Mears. I'm the Dean of the School of Design Strategies at Parsons, the new School for Design. Um, David Van Zandt, our president, was going to make a few opening remarks, but he um, has the flu this evening, so we are standing in for him. It's a collaborative experience, so all of us are part of the collaboration. So welcome. Um, thank you for coming to this evening's performance and demonstration of the future of the orchestral garment presented by students from across the new school. A brand new collaboration, exciting new collaboration of designers and musicians um, rethinking the way that we work and operate in the arts in New York City and at the new school. We're honored to have many special guests this evening, including, of course, Marin Alsop from the Baltimore Symphony Orchestra and members of her orchestra, and many special guests from Parsons and the new school, including Tomio Taki, um, from the Board of Governors, who has um, facilitated and helped this collaboration. Thank you very much. Uh, Richard Kessler, Dean Manis, Tim Marshall, Provost Marshall, um, and as I said, apologies from David Van Zantz, who's um, ill this evening. We have a very uh, packed program, as you will see here. Um, um, my fellow Dean from Parsons, Anne Gaines, will um, uh, talk a little bit about the collaboration, that be the beginnings of the collaboration. Richard will talk about what it's been like from Manus, and then introduce Marin, and then the students and faculty. So, Anne Gaines. Thank you, Allison, and greetings, everyone. So, the future of orchestral garments is an extraordinary interdisciplinary collaboration. And these kinds of projects are ever present and ongoing at Parsons as they highlight the continual evolution of art and design practice in the 21st century. Collaborations and these kinds of initiatives are a priority here and integral to our education. And they really keep Parsons at the forefront of art and design innovation. This partnership with the Baltimore Symphony Orchestra over the course of this year has joined music, performance, fashion, technology, and our university community in unique and dynamic ways. Uh, the, the works you'll see and experience tonight represent students varying across, studying across various programs at Parsons. And it all started with a fashionable technology course led by Sabine Seymour in the School of Art, Media, and Technology this fall. It was then followed by The Gift, a course in the Integrated Design Program at the School of Design Strategies this spring. And these students represent very disparate populations, graduate and undergraduate, multiple schools, taking the courses at multiple times and involved a a distance external and academic partner. So what the faculty and students were able to do is interact and communicate. They built on the in initial experiences and the first projects to really inform the ongoing relationship and successive works. All of the students had the opportunity to travel to Baltimore. They met music director Marin Alsup, they met the performers and, and witnessed where performances happened for the BSO. However, upon their return, they needed to continue to interact with musicians to inform their research and develop their projects. Enter Manus and Dean Richard Kessler. So the contributions Manus has made through the course of the year has really been an intrinsic part of the success of this design initiative. So I'd like to say that we have had on, at every stage of this project, we have had generous support from the BSO, from Manus, and all of the students, staff, and faculty involved here at Parsons. So join me in celebrating this event this evening, and now I'm pleased to hand things off to Richard Kessler, Dean of Manus. Thank you, Anne, and welcome, everyone. You know, you probably hear at various projects, various concerts, that a project or an event is transformative. Um, and often it turns out not to be. Well, that's not the case tonight. For Manus, this particular project is indeed transformative. For a school that had, is, has been highly traditional and has basically been, I think, operating under the idea that we know what's great and we present what's great, we teach what's great. 
To create the environment where you research, where you experiment, where you stop for a second and begin to think about what you're doing and how you're doing it differently, and spend time, instead of pushing to the stage, spend time to create those kinds of laboratories that I believe classical music needs, well, that's what this project is. And in addition to that, it's really, I think, the first opportunity where Manus has ever partnered with another division, particularly Parsons, in this particular way, at this particular level, in this kind of depth, taking a look at what it means to work across domains um, as we've certainly never worked before. So it's a project, I think, that has a lot of legs to it. We're already beginning to take a look at how we're going to use the technology for other things. I'll give you one a quick example. Next fall, we're creating what we are still tentatively calling the Manus Eye Orchestra. And it's a technology-based orchestra. And we're already looking at the partnership between Todd Reynolds, who's running this project on the Manus faculty side, with Sabine um, on Parsons to take a look at how the wearable technology will become part of the instrument sort of toolkit that we'll use for the Manus Eye Orchestra. And you can begin to see that this project is really sizable. It's creating a pool that we're gonna draw on for, from for a long time to come. And I, I could not tell you, uh, I'm, I could not be more excited. So it's a really special project. I know that the, um, the musicians have loved, the students have loved taking part in it. What could be better to spend time with clothing that fits better, that looks better, that breathes better, that stretches, that works for the actual player? For the, for the player that has to reach up like this, for the player that has to reach like that. The instruments don't bind. The, um, the, the clothing doesn't bind. Also, the idea that you're working with visuals, that data is being created from your performances, from the movements, that data is then being translated into something that's also art, that enhances and connects to your performance. It's a beautiful thing. So we're thrilled about this. And now I'm, I'm even more thrilled to be able to introduce Marin also. Marin is um, actually kind of Manus' family. I don't think she's ever been introduced this way before. But while she didn't go to Manus, in fact, we both went to Juilliard, um, Manus' father is a Manus grad. And so we see her really as, um, um, as an extended family member at Manus, Lamar, right? So a um, word or two about Marin. One is um, she brought this project to us. She made this possible by coming up with this idea. And um, I also think, um, and without sounding like a suck up, I do think she's, um, when I look around at the artists in classical music, okay, when I look around at the artists in classical music, you know, she is, I think, the finest communicator of the conductors, the one who finds ways to express the meaning of projects. I listen to her on NPR while I might be cooking something in the afternoon. Um, to see the education projects that she's put together with or kids um, at the Baltimore Symphony, to see the breadth of her interest in music across domain, across styles, the different composers. She's a truly extraordinary artist, and it really is indeed an absolute pleasure to be able to welcome her tonight. Marin, please. <clears throat> Thank you, thank you, Richard. Um, welcome to everyone, so many important and wonderful people here this evening. You know, uh, this is the culmination of a, a long gest gestation of dreaming about what's possible uh, with symphony orchestras. Uh, I, I won't go back to the beginning of time, but for me, growing up in, uh, in an environment with music was transformative as a child. And as Richard said, my father, Lamar, went to Manus, and my mother, Ruth, a uh, cellist, went to Juilliard. And I think being steeped in this kind of creative environment allowed me to have the opportunity to think outside the box. And that's something that we are committed to doing at the Baltimore Symphony. This project came about really um, because I like to watch um, reality TV too much. And uh, I watched uh, Project Runway. And uh, I thought, well, they really have to redesign what we wear at the symphony orchestra. Because while what we're doing is, it, it does pay tribute to the past, of course, but it's really part of today. I mean, Beethoven was new music, and you know, Lowell Lieberman is new music, and there, there's wonderful things being created today, but we're still wearing the clothes that we wore 200 years ago. And some of them haven't been cleaned, I think, either in 200 <laughs> years. But anyway, um, 
So I, uh, I decided to call my mentor, my non-musical mentor, uh, Mr. Tomi Otaki, because he um, not only knows everything about everything, but he also is in, from the fashion world and sits on the board of Parsons. And so he put me in touch with Joel Towers, and we had a conversation and just chatting a bit. And I said, listen, why don't we explore um, redesigning the 21st century orchestra? I wasn't just going for fashion. I thought we should just redesign everything about it. So this is just this is just the first tiny step, hopefully, in a long, a long collaboration, and, and we'll see where it takes us. Um, but I'm thrilled because my musicians in the Baltimore Symphony, they also are able to think outside the box. And I think um, the young musicians that we have today really are looking at their art in a new way. Um, what we do is great. We don't want to tamper with that. But the way it's presented and the way we're thinking about how we come across to our audiences, the way we interact, I think all of that is up for grabs. I mean, what we do has to just continue to be at the highest possible level and, and pay homage to the music, music, music first. But I think um, we have to explore everything else. And collaborating with these incredible professors here and uh, the students have been amazing. I've, I've only met them a couple of times, but they're uh, clearly creative, out of, out of the box thinkers. So I don't want to take up too much more time because I want them to have an opportunity to show you what they've done and also for these musicians to perform for you. So I'm going to turn it over to the two professors um, who have been really committed to this project, Sabine Seymour and um, Gabi Asfor. So come on up. Thank you very much. I'm supposed to do the talking. Um, so uh, first of all, I want to thank you all for coming. Um, and uh, this has been a wonderful experience over the last year. Um, and Gabi and I are really thrilled that um, the turnout actually has been as great as it is, even though the weather outside actually wants me to draw myself and go swimming. Um, so what I really would like to do is I want to thank a few people, uh, and one is Eric Bestman. Oh, yeah. Without him, this would not have gotten together. Uh, he is fantastic in facilitating and understanding how to communicate, and that leads me to Mark Fitzpatrick and his team, the audio uh, visual team here at Parsons, making this entire thing possible. Thank you so much. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to introduce uh, the first uh, group of musicians uh, and uh, the piece that will be performed. And it's going to take a few minutes for them to set up. This is interactive. So please be, stay with us for a little bit. Uh, my heart had raised the last half an hour, and I mentioned this, so that I could have powered New York City. <laughs> so hopefully everything is working out just fine. And if it's not, don't worry about it. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, these things happen. So the first project that we'll be setting up is called Motion Impact. It's uh, created by two students, uh, Jeremy Patterson. He's an MFA DT student, second year, who is graduating this semester. Uh, DT stands for Design and Technology. And uh, the second stu student is uh, Ross Leonardi, and he's an undergrad student from the Interdisciplinary Design Program. And uh, they're going to um, present a project that is uh, about data visualization. So the music that you will hear performed is When Music is Missing, Music Sings by Stuart Saunders Smith. It is performed by Philip Gallo and Chessinger Tang. And these two are basically playing interesting per per percussion instruments. They sort of found objects. That was the premise of the actual uh, piece. And um, what I really want to stress is uh, the garment itself. So the garment has uh, reflective arms, and these shall stress the sensors that are integrated. So you have integrated sensors that uh, capture, the uh, capture the motion of the percussionists, and these uh, are visualized, as you can see already on the top there. And so these gloves are also made out of refractive yarns in order to, or reflective materials, in order to make sure that you guys draw your attention onto the actual arms and the movements and can make a little bit of a relationship between what you see on screen and what these guys are actually doing. And without further ado, please enjoy.
guys. Jeremy Patterson right now picking up his laptop, and Ross Renato right here. Second year, he's a second year design and technology student graduating this year, and uh, they will be performing The Serpent Kiss by William Balcom. And the performer is Xu Lingua, she is the pianist, you will see. And the uh, wonderful garment uh, that actually acts as the screen, uh, which uh, will be projected onto, is um, Xu Lingua for Manis. And uh, so the project is a, real, is a combination of a real-time um, animation where you actually have to realize that the Kinect box, which is the technology that is used, is picking up the silhouette of the performer. So whenever she's moving and she's becoming bigger or smaller, the Kinect box picks it up and adjusts the visuals to it. So that's one of the uh, things. And the second is that Yina in the back there is acting a little bit like a VJ as well. So you will see this combination of those two. And um, very important on this is actually realizing uh, that you see visualizations that react to the actual music itself. So without further ado, um, this is probably going to take two minutes for setting up, so, but I will not continue talking. So. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
I just want to mention that um, the wonderful thing about this project is that uh, it's bringing all these different um, schools together. And um, what I really enjoyed is to work with uh, all these different students together. It was really a blast in the class. It was wonderful to see all of this energy mixing up. And um, My class is uh, called The Gift, and it's basically uh, based on uh, a team working together and getting the best out of each person. So my job is to get uh, each person's magic come to the surface. <laughs> um, and I also want to mention that uh, at uh, the Integrated Design Program, um, the reason why I'm here is because um, it is mixing, um, making clothing from scratch and also reworking old garments, which I believe is the future. And I want to mention that uh, this project was a mix of the two and was also a mix of uh, a team of women's wear and a team of men's wear and a team of media. Um, and a manager and a photographer. So, you know, that was quite something already. Um, I would like to introduce my team. Come on, guys. Um, they're not all here, but some of them are here. <laughs> okay. okay. There we go. Um, <laughs> I can, I'm going to let uh, Renee take over because she's going to explain the garments as we go. Uh, we're going to talk about the Shulen scarves first. All right, firstly, uh, my name is Renee Sundin. I am the project coordinator of Gabby's The Gift class. So I just really quickly want to talk about um, Shulen's outfit here. So this was created by our women's team. And um, so we really just wanted to create a garment that would act as a great projection for Vigiano's um, mapping. And I think this worked quite well with the cape. And we, do you, did you feel comfortable? Yeah, yeah? it was good? Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, and so I think that uh, we achieved this and um, I guess that's it, sorry. <laughs> okay, and then, so this here is our men's team. So this is Ashley, Benji, Anderson, and then we have our women's team, which is Eugen, Annie, and Jenny. So I would just, they worked really hard this semester, and I think they did a really wonderful job. And I'm really excited to introduce the garments to you. And um, yeah, so let's get moving then. <laughs> All right, so I want to bring out the performers, if that's okay. Yeah, okay. <laughs> So we're going to have a slide going as well, so you know. <laughs> All right, so first I'm going to introduce you the men's garment. So Joe here is wearing a uh, coat and tails made, um, that we made ourselves from our own patterns. And so it's made from a cool suiting that really allows him to breathe quite well. And also, what's really special about this garment is the mesh, are the mesh inserts that we added. So if Joe could just lift his arm for me here. So we have the insert here, as well as the, cen as well as the center back. And um, also under his arm is here. So really, I mean, you know, you'll see as he plays, we really need that stretch. And also, it really allows him to breathe um, better. So also for our shirting, we um, took out the back panels and the sleeves and we added jersey instead. That way they could move a little bit easier and it's also a lot more comfortable. And the bow ties we made from the leftover fabric that we took away from the panels. <laughs> so that was just a great way to use the extra fabric that we already had. And so we also made the vests from scratch. They're made from silk. And so we have polka dot ones and paisley ones. And the pants. <laughs> Yay, Paisley, okay. And um, we also made pants for them, and what we decided to do was just use vintage pants instead and tailor to fit them. So that way it's a little slimmer, but it's a little bit more modern. So Sam's all the way down um, there. He's wearing uh, just, it's basically the same thing as Joe's, but instead of coat and tails, it's just like a dinner jacket. So there's a few different options there. 
And then we have Reed, who's next to him, and he's actually wearing a vintage jacket. So we, what we decided to do was take the mesh inserts that we used here on Joe, as well as Sam, and just put it into the vintage jacket. So it's a really easy way that you can utilize this method on existing garments that you already have. And so he's also wearing a similar shirt as uh, Sam and Joe, so he also has the cotton jersey, and then also vintage pants. So all quite comfortable, I hope. And now we have our uh, women's look. So first here we have Catherine. So we have a scoop um, neck dress here. We decided to use uh, the suiting as well on the women's dresses. So it's a cool suiting, so it's very comfortable, it's light, it's airy, so it, it's, it's, you won't get too hot. And we have the silk um, paneling down here, and also we have this ultra lightweight mesh for sleeves. And if you can just turn around for me, we actually have this bit going up here in the back that really allows her to sit more comfortably as she plays, and it's also a little fun silhouette that we're playing around with. And uh, lastly, we have Meredith. So she's also wearing the um, cool suiting. And we decided to do um, a little bit more avant-garde look here with the V-neck and um, the, like, the pointed um, bodice, as well as the lace sleeves. And everything has a lot of stretch in it, you guys. It looks good. It doesn't look like it has stretch in it, but it's very comfortable, and you can move easily in it. And um, yeah, so hopefully you guys will see that as they perform. All right, thank you so much.
That was really good, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, so before we bring everyone out on the stage, I just want to talk about our last look, which is actually the look that I'm wearing. So, yay, okay. Um, so what we really wanted to do was have an elegant look that people could, that performers could wear, you know, when they play the bigger instrument, like the double bass and the cello. So I'm actually wearing pants. They're very wide. Yes, I guess I'm so basically, it's, you know, it's very comfortable. I can attest for that. And also, it's just, it's a really great way to bring pants into it without, you know, being very um, slim and just very elegant, almost like a skirt. And then also, um, we really love lace, and we've noticed that a lot of musicians like to wear waist, lace. Sorry, so I'm wearing lace here as well, as well as a cotton jersey uh, underneath. And I think we're going to bring everyone out now. All right, thank you. All the designers can come as well. <laughs> 